I think that you got tricked by the Supercell marketing team. Well, at least if you spent money on Clash of Clans before. And it isn't even that unrealistic since an estimated 76 million people actively play this mobile hit. Clash of Clans produces mind-blowing numbers, but first let me take you back to the year 2020. In comparison, the game had a rather low number of players back then, marking just 40.3 million active users at its peak. Now, this number standing alone isn't that crazy considering that gigantic gaming community, but how much every of those 40.3 million players on average spends certainly is. $29.75 Yes, these people made money, a lot of money, but that my friends, is just the beginning. The game was launched by Supercell in Helsinki, Finland on the 2nd of August 2012. Backed by Tencent, an absolute Chinese giant in the gaming market, the e-commerce branch, the social media business and many more, money and investment were never a problem. Also, Tencent owns an 81.4% stake of Supercell, which is valued at $8.4 billion. So surely, if someone is interested in earning a lot of money, it is Tencent. In 2022, the game made astonishing $482 million and $223 million so far in 2023. Of course, Clash of Clans is not the only Supercell hit game. There is also Clash Royale, Heyday, Boom Beach and Brawl Stars. I think Brawl Stars is a big hit for mostly young children, while they cover a bigger audience with Heyday, Boom Beach and Clash Royale, and of course Clash of Clans. And now we have all these numbers and money in mind, let's look at how they did it. This is the strategy of Clash of Clans. Strategy number one are highly targeted campaigns. One of Supercell's standout approaches was its precision in targeting. By using advanced analytics and user profiling, the company could identify potential whales. These are not just your regular players, they are enthusiasts who have a propensity to invest more time and notably money. But now, how do you find those whales? The first way is the analyzation of player behavior. One of their primary tools is the analysis of in-game purchase patterns. By scrutinizing how and when purchases are made, they can pinpoint players who are consistently outspending the average user. It's not just about a one-off buy, they're looking at those who make frequent purchases or who aren't shy about opting for those higher value packages, indicating a deeper commitment to the game and spending money on it. But spending alone does not give the full picture. That's where engagement levels come into play. A player's engagement can often forecast their spending habits. Those who are logging in day after day, actively participating in events or just spending more time in the game tend to have a strong attachment. And with that attachment often comes a willingness to invest financially into their gaming experience. The second way is observing game metrics and data points. One way to gauge a player's investment is by observing their progression speed. Players sipping through levels or climbing the ranks at a notably faster rate often indicates that they are not just relying on skill alone, likely enhancing their progression with in-game purchases. Boosts, aids and other accelerants can significantly speed up a player's journey and those who frequently use these tools stand out in the crowd. But it's not just about speed. The riches a player possesses can be just as revealing. By keeping an eye on a player's inventory and assets, Supercell can decipher a lot about their spending habits. The presence of rare items, a stockpile of special troops, or a search of resources could be more than just good luck or exceptional gameplay. Whales, or big spenders, often have a collection that reflects their willingness to invest, accumulating assets at a pace that most players can't achieve without some monetary assistance. Once these whales are identified, personalized offers and promotions come into action. Now, these are not just your run-of-the-mill promotions. They're tailor-made for the whale in question. By meticulously analyzing each player's spending patterns and in-game behavior, Supercell crafts offers that are almost irresistible, ensuring that these heavy spenders see value in every penny they pour into the game. However, the perks don't stop at exclusive deals. Recognizing the importance of retaining these high-value players, many games, including Clash of Clans, have turned to loyalty programs. Think of it as a kind of VIP club for the gaming world. As players reach specific spending milestones, they unlock a trove of exclusive benefits, rewards and content, making them feel recognized and valued for their continued commitment to the game. 
since we've now got the whales on our hook, let's take a look at strategy number two. In the competitive realm of app stores, standing out isn't just about having a great game, it's about how well you market it. Reviews play an indispensable role in this digital age. Think of them as the modern word of mouth, only far more potent. Recognizing their weight, Supercell didn't just passively collect these reviews, they cultivated them. By spotlighting positive feedback and actively interacting with them, they fostered an extended sense of community, bridging the gap between the game's virtual landscape and the real-world app stores. This proactive engagement didn't just inflate their ego, it propelled their app store ratings upwards. But what's a high rating without visibility? Being in the app store is one thing, but reigning over it? That's the true goal. With their eyes set on the top spots, Supercell painstakingly fine-tuned their ASO strategies. They meticulously crafted their game descriptions to capture intrigue, stayed in the loop with trending keywords to ensure relevance, and showcased their game with striking visuals to draw potential players in. And when feedback rolled in about in-game issues or bugs, they were on it. I mean, instantly ensuring that their players' experience was always up to the mark. Because in the end, Supercell understood that it wasn't just about getting players to download their game, but making sure they stayed in for the long run. Last but not least, this is strategy number 3. Diving deep into the world of gaming, it becomes evident that creating a successful game isn't the sole recipe for success. It's equally about the ecosystem you build around it. The first prong of their multifaceted approach is a diversified content portfolio. Recognizing that players of today consume content on myriad platforms, Supercell didn't limit themselves to the confines of the game. They ventured out, curating a rich tapestry of content that catered to the diverse interests of their player base. This ranged from eye-catching cinematic trailers that painted the rich lore of the game, to in-depth tutorials that helped novice players navigate complex gameplay mechanics. Furthermore, they offered fans a sneak peek behind the curtain, showcasing the intricate process of game development. But Supercell didn't stop at producing their own content. They tapped into the immense potential of user-generated content, also called UGC. Recognizing the intrinsic value UGC holds in the gaming sphere, they championed it. After all, in a community as tight-knit as gaming, players trust the word of fellow gamers the most. By shining a spotlight on, promoting, and even incorporating content created by their user base, Supercell not only deepened player engagement, but also fostered a sense of belonging. This strategic move transferred players into brand ambassadors, creating a ripple effect that drew more players into the game's universe and bolstered its future in the competitive market. But to be honest, I am pretty sure that the information I had for you here is probably not the, the, the full information, you know what I mean? Because, yeah, how to say, if uh, all psychological tricks and marketing strategies would be open source to the public, I'm not too sure if uh, most of them would keep working, so they probably keep some hidden. But still, I hope this video gave you some kind of an insight uh, that's interesting or you could use. If you stay till here, you're fucking dope, and thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share if you're interested. Check out my last video in which we looked at the scenario of a Swiss attack on Liechtenstein. Might be interesting.